A big reason I started this playlist on this channel was to create an accurate release order checklist for Star Wars modern figures. Because, well, there's really no place on the internet that shows the exact release order of every figure. They tend to get mixed up unless you tracked them, which I did! So this is a little bit of a cleanup first, uh, before we jump into new figures. Where we last left off, we were talking about the deluxe figures from the Power... Well, not Power of the Force, excuse me, it was the Saga series, the, the uh, gold-striped blue card figures. Where we got C-3PO with a uh, skate pod, we got an Ewok with a glider, and we got an old guy that looks like John Kerry with a map. Hey, what child doesn't want to play with a John Kerry lookalike figure with a map? Now, the reason I'm saying clean up with the exact order is there was also a slight delay in the two Imperial dignitaries. The first one we got when I covered them, the second one, the one on the left there with the more uh, tri-fold hat there, he came out after this deluxe wave and now before the next basic wave. So these two were separated, but uh, Karen Ballista Vanny came out now, followed by these Hoth figures. All right. So that's the exact release order we're talking about. So let's jump into the Hoth figures that came out after the second Imperial Dignitary. And uh, along with them, one other cleanup figure is in this wave, we also got the new re-release of Han in Hoth in the, uh, in the blue coat. So where previously he had the brown coat released on the blue Saga card, well then the other color was now released with the Saga with the gold stripe. Same figure, we already covered him when we reviewed the first release. This is just a straight redeco because the whole Han wears blue, Han wears brown, and hey, why not? If you have the tool already, might as well maximize it with a different deco. All right, so that's now Star Wars history. We've talked about the exact release order. Now let's talk about the new figures, and that brings us to the planet Hoth as opposed to the planet Tatooine that I teased. That's actually next week. All right. So the first figure in this new wave, following the second Imperial Dignitary and those deluxe figures, was our Hoth Evacuation Hoth Soldier. Now, we'd had Hoth Soldiers before. We had facial hair, we had non-facial hair, we had five points of articulation, and we had a backpack. And that's kind of what we got here, minus the facial hair. This figure isn't that much of an improvement over the previous Hoth Troopers. In fact, it's actually, oddly, a bit of a downgrade. We still haven't gotten the exact version from the original vintage line, either based on the figure or on the card photo, because mustaches, full beards, etc., etc. We've gotten the uh, Tauntaun handler on the left there, but we still have not gotten the exact mustachioed Hoth trooper trench soldier dude. It's great to get the vintage figures, but this clearly isn't that guy. It's this guy. See, there's a photo of him, and the figure actually looks like him. So whoever this nameless trooper is, he matches all of the trench warfare troopers in Echo Base fighting against the At-Ats. We do not call them AT-ATs. And the reason that he's a bit of a downgrade is while his accessories are the same size, he's really small. Like, look at him compared to other hot troopers. He's almost half an inch smaller. Maybe this is just showing diversity in the line, but he's one of the shortest figures we've ever gotten in the modern Star Wars line. I mean, here he is just posed with some random figures that happen to be on my desk, but you could see. I don't know, maybe he's that guy in the middle there who's like really short. I don't know. But yeah, this figure was a bit of a letdown, not only in the size, but very little articulation. He was back to five points of articulation, which we hadn't really, well, I guess General uh, Riken had that. All right, let's move on to another five points of articulation figure, R. 3PO, R for red, as in, if you ever listen to the original, uh, the, 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 the book, C-3PO says his name is C-V-3PO. The V is for versatility. That's a random quote from the novel. All right, so yes, Hoth Base gave us white protocol droids, red protocol droids, and while we got our white protocol droid in the Power of the Jedi series, well, we've now got our red version in the Gold Saga. This was actually kind of a unique droid because of the pose of the arms. They were in both a, you had a bent arm on one side and a straight arm on the other. And we haven't really gotten this. Mostly, almost every protocol droid has two bent arms. So it's kind of neat to have one that's slightly different. And the color is very dark, which is also kind of neat and unique. Whether R3PO had bright red castings, castings, shells, skin, whatever you want to call it, shells, or he had faded ones, he's been done both ways in many different toys because, heck, it's a C-3PO with red paint. Again, when you could take a figure and do it in another color, you'll do that. 
And oddly, this figure has actually gotten quite a few re-releases with completely different molds and tools over the years, including a uh, Build-A-Figure Walmart pack-in with Solo, now in a blue coat with hat up. There's so many combinations for Han Solo Hoth. And then another re-release as part of the Droid Factory Protocol Droids at Disneyland. It was one of the few show-accurate or movie-accurate figures you could make. All right, last figure in this wave is a new Hoth Luke. This is specifically a Wampa fighting Luke. Now, usually when you get Wampa fighting Luke, you get it or him with a Wampa. It makes a great what's called a battle in a box, something very popular in the toy industry when you can pack a hero and a villain, or in this case a hero and a monster, together. It makes a great pack for a child because they can instantly play out an adventure. This Luke has more articulated than any Hoth Luke we had before, and he comes with a really cool ice base which is something we started to see in this era of Star Wars releases. This ice base, in particular, can now be combined with a sold separately Wampa to make the full ice cave and for Luke to actually hang upside down, which I have to say is really cool. It's one of the only times we've had a basic figure and a deluxe figure completely interact where they each came with half of the base. So Luke's base, you can just flip it upside down and instead of a foot base of snow, it now becomes the part that holds him to the wall or rather the ceiling of the Wampa's ice cave. Again. Cool, and you could even put Luke's lightsaber in the base as if he's reaching for it. We also get Luke all scratched up, both in his photo as well as the actual paint ops. We did get a scratched up Luke before, but this one is more articulated. The Not only do the arms have ball joints, but the scarf is also articulated so that you could move it into an upside-down position so that he's truly hanging and reaching for his lightsaber about to uh, disarm the Wampa there with his lightsaber. Spoiler alert for a 40-year-old movie. All right, so yeah, this is one of the cooler set pieces we've gotten, but it requires two purchases, a Wampa and a Luke. And it's definitely a special edition Wampa because he's chewing on Tauntaun and his arm comes off with the blood. So let's actually take a quick look at these figures because, uh, yeah, I've added that feature. Video, yay! All right, so here's our Hoth Trooper. And as you can see, he's only five points of articulation, arms, legs, and head. So it's a bit of a throwback, although you do get the gun accessory in the holster there compared to pretty much any other Hoth Trooper or 3 and 3 4 figure. And yeah, I mean, you, you could, like, significantly, like, a whole head and shoulders too short. I mean, compare them to the Luke from the same wave. You know, this Luke and that Hoth Trooper are the same, but yeah, that guy in the middle? Man, I mean, what is... I don't know. Maybe he's just... Maybe he's a kid. I don't know. Maybe he's a teenager. They're short guys. Who knows? I mean, you can, uh, you know, the Rebels uh, needed to recruit everyone. It's the same backpack. You can see it's the same tool, but it simply attaches to a much smaller figure. And we actually had him re-released in a box set later on. All right. Let's take a look at Luke here. We'll compare him to a uh, another Luke from down the line. You can see, you know, more or less the same. They've made improvements, but this one gets the job done. We've got ball joints on the uh, hands there, on the shoulders, as well as a joint that makes the scarf movable, which is, you know, again, really cool because you can hang him upside down and make him look all film accurate-y, et cetera. So here's the base. You clip him, oops, wrong side. No, it doesn't go in there. It goes in this part. That's the part that connects to the upper part. All right, there we go, got him in. All right, so there he is in his base. See, it holds pretty tight and it can work as like the floor of Hoth or you connect it to the rest of the pillar that comes with the Wampa. Just clips right in there, whoops, wrong side. There we go. And now he's hanging upside down in a Wampa cave, which is pretty cool. And here's our Wampa. Wampa came out about the same time and, uh, you know, can attack Luke and make him his meal. Or Luke can grab his lightsaber and cut his arm off. Again, spoiler alert for a 40-year-old movie. All right. So, yes, pretty cool Luke. And, um, you know, great way to connect basic and deluxe. Our 3 po here, so again, you'll notice the arms, very unique, as well as the deco, a very dull red. Looks like he's been around for a while, and I actually really like this because it's unique. Most of the protocol droids have a very bright color. So this is the Walmart Build-A-Figure R3PO, which I can't get to stand right now because his leg broke and I had to glue it. It's not important. And then this is the Disney version. Ah, there goes the Walmart one. Oh, well. Hello. So, yeah, you can see the brightness of the Disney and the Walmart one versus the original carded version. And then, of course, here's Han in his brown coat. So same Han as the blue coat, just different paint. Same thing, little button on the back that makes him do his little lightsaber thing because, you know, Han can do the twist. 